My name is Shavio. Three words to actually describe me um, would be I'm very loud, I'm quite outgoing, and I think a lot of my friends they say that I'm very funny. <laughs> Currently, I got four cats. Okay, my first cat is called Coco Chanel. Second, Princess Cleo. Uh, my third cat is Baby Dior, and the last cat is Baby L. Um, actually, I do have a nickname. When I was in Polytechnic, they called me Sha Bear because um, I guess because of my size lah. And when I get um, older, right, people call me Prince Shasha. I think because it's my Facebook name. So nowadays, when I go out, people will call me Prince Shasha, Prince Shasha everywhere I go. Definitely, I love to sing. Okay, I love to sing. Um, I love to be on stage, acting, MC, and whatever not. Uh, a particular singer which I love, right? I think should be um, Datuk Sri Nohaliza. Andanya kau kumiliki terdahulu sebelumnya. Okay, that's all. <laughs> If I could be an animal for a day, I would love to be an elephant. <laughs> Not for the obvious reason. I got this thing, I think all my friends know. Whenever I go to a country, be it be anywhere, I, will, I always have to go to the zoo. Yeah, I got this thing. So whenever I go to Bangkok, I will have to take the elephant. I will go to the safari world, I will go to anywhere just to get a glimpse of the elephant. Yeah, I love to be the elephant. Not because of the size, because I think elephants are so clever. I mean, by nature, it's, it's, there's a research going on like saying that elephants are smart animals. My biggest flaw used to be I always have self doubt in myself and because of them I'm actually very easily affected and of course being emotional whatever people talk about me I will think hard of myself lah. and of course uh, you know I'm very self-conscious and I have very low uh, self-confidence even with my friends around I always think that I'm not good enough I always have this fear of doing something good or maybe sometimes I also have this like I couldn't believe in myself that I could do something fully I always have this feel that I only can do something half past six, you know, a half job done and whatever not. I always wanted to have a cat. I always wanted. But my mom, you know how parents they are, right? They will say that, I yeah, cat, you know, they are everywhere, very leechy, want to take care of them, want to clear their shape, poo, makan, all this you must take care of, right? So my mother was the one who told me, don't want to so leche Because I also had this habit that I would take care for a while, that kind of thing Yeah, so they tell me better don't Yeah, so since young I've always been an animal lover And usually like last time I was a kid, right, there's a cat downstairs, right Me and my cousin would go up and take milk la, would take fish la and whatever not we can find just feed them Because my grandmother, my late grandmother, she loves cats Yeah, I think that's why I first found love for cats As a family, I mean, my cousins and all we are very close to our grandmother, my grandparents, because uh, especially those live around here. Because um, I remember last time when I was in kindergarten, uh, whenever we go back home, the first thing to go is our grandparents' house, which just next block to mine. So um, we were very close to her, and she keep a lookout for us. Even though at her late age, before she passed on, she always make sure that you know uh, she will call us, you know, ask us how we are. We are very close, and for me, a very um, I find very sad because she was the first in my big family to pass on. Yeah, so it was a huge, huge blow for us. I choose to enter the healthcare industry as the volunteer executive because I love to work with elderly. I think they're adorable. And I always wanted to help them out. Being in this industry for over three years, I'm loving every aspect of it. You know, I feel very happy to bring so much happiness to other people, especially the elderly people in my hospital. They always makes me remember my grandmother. I'm working as a volunteer executive in Amokyo Taupan Hospital. As a volunteer executive, what we do is that we recruit volunteers, of course. Uh, we train volunteers according to our own um, workplace. So for me, I run programs for my elderly, for the patients in my hospital. So I bring in companies, I bring schools, individual volunteers to provide services to them. Okay guys, welcome to level 4. This is the patient hub for Ward 3. Okay, so currently my staff are actually preparing the, the equipment lah for later because later we have Tai Chi and Pandan making. So you follow me to the ward now. 
Okay? Okay, so basically I'm looking for that patient. So usually what I do in my daily life, I'll vlog to the, across the ward. I'll talk to the patient. I'll talk to the staff. And don't try to laugh. Okay? So we are meeting Anne. Anne is actually a very special patient to me. Lah. So currently Anne is actually resting. Yeah. Say, say hi to the camera first. <laughs> there is it. <laughs> Anne has been very supportive. She has been joining all my volunteer program. Yeah, I think she appreciates what we've done for her, I think. Huh? Right, not Anne. You like so far? Like? Have you met Kitaka? What are you celebrity, buka eye, yeah. okay? Maka hati ta, huh? Celebrity, jump on celebrity. Okay, lah, come, we go and see the two patients. <laughs> Two of my favorite patients, this is Pabu. Pabu! Nah. Cakap hi kat sana. Ah. Cakap hi. Hi. <laughs> ah, this is Pak Karim. Karim cakap hi. Hi. Ah, bagus. Okay. 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 I'm also a founder of Cat Asset Therapy Singapore. So what I do is that for Cat Therapy Asset Singapore, we actually bring cat therapy to beneficiaries. We give them that kind of like animal therapy experience to those who are in need, the special kids, the elderly sector, and of course the NKF patients. Yeah, so basically we bring our cats there, let them get mingled with the cats, and of course we, we starting to actually approach more and more places so that uh, we can bring this cat therapy thing to them. The cat therapy program is something that I wanted to do is because um, I wanted something different in Singapore Something that is different from the norm I mean we have dog therapy for over 10 over years We have horse therapy But we didn't have a market where it is cheap Which is um, appeal to the Muslim community So I thought that let's start a cat therapy So while doing the research Especially when in the hospital setting We need to do a lot of methodology So I did a lot of research on it and I did a lot of hard, it was pretty difficult to convince the bosses and all and I managed to do it and because of all these small things that you know, I tried my very best and I feel that oh this is the things that I really wanted to do and it's really like my baby project that's why I'm very happy that you know, this is something that I, I got to achieve Um, in the early stages of CATS, after we are so excited to embark it, you know, with Deborah's support, uh, on a full full day, which is a bad day, actually, um, Deborah texted me. She was telling me that her constraint, she couldn't continue doing CATS. Then I was like, what? You cannot do CATS anymore. It's like, you know, I'm so, I'm, I believe in this project so much, and she's the only one that is doing it. And I was like, really down. I was literally very down. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know the context to go to. I don't know. And Cat Welfare Society at the point of time was the only support. So I was like, I literally was very sad. I actually begged Deborah to tell her that can you just please stay for like a few more sessions you know telling her that please not until we find a replacement a few nights before i actually uh whatsapp sha because throughout this journey like we were actually partners sort of colleagues and then we progressed to actually uh, becoming friends as well so i could see that uh, he's actually very very passionate about uh, cat therapy la. it's uh, something that's very close to his heart and he fought very hard to actually get this uh, program implemented as well. So I was at him to actually tell him that, hey, really sorry, but I, I can't continue with uh, this cat therapy session anymore because uh, due to my work commitments, that he actually uh, requested or uh, pleaded to, saying that, hey, maybe you can just try a couple of more uh, sessions, then we see how it goes uh, from there. Lah. But unfortunately, my schedule was really very tight and it was uh, really quite difficult for me to uh, bring my cats and to continue this session. As a colleague, I was I understand that because we are working in so-called in the same sector, it can be very busy at times. And I think she's also working with her mediator staff. And but as a friend, I was actually frankly speaking a bit disappointed. Like, because we started this together, and halfway I felt that she just 
abandon me, you know, like I had nobody and cats has to close down. That point of time, I thought to myself, like, shit, is this happening again? You know, I always have a lot of self doubt about myself. Is this program not going to work? You know, left handing halfway. And to think that the patients actually love it, which is the baby. This, they are the reason why I started all this, the beneficiaries. The very last day of cat therapy, I actually dragged myself to work. Um, because um, the previous night before the day itself, I kept thinking to myself, how am I supposed to break the news to the patients? Because we do have patients who follow through for all the different sessions. It really make a change in their life and I know how happy they are and some of them even ask me, Shavio, when is the next cat therapy session? So during the session itself, right, I mean seeing the patient being so happy and I didn't know what to do. I don't know how to break the news to them. And I was clueless. I feel disappointed in myself because I couldn't run the program, continue the program for them. During the session, actually Deborah introduced me to Belinda and it was actually Belinda's first therapy cat session and for that session also I brought my cat for the first time. So during the session, I told Belinda that you know what, this is the last session of cat therapy in the hospital or you can see that it's, it's the last session for cat therapy as a whole. He was very enthusiastic and I could actually see the disappointment in his face because, you know, it was his passion. And I told him, I said, you know, well, it doesn't really matter whether CWS was involved or not. I said, you have a kitten, I have a cat, you know, why don't we just continue doing this, you know, on an ad hoc basis. At that time, we didn't even have a name. I was like, wow, like, mmm, you know, like, I know for the past few days, I've been thinking, what should I do? Out of nowhere, Belinda just come into the picture and she telling me that, you know what, let's do it, you know? You just not stop this. Let's not stop something that you have already started. Let's continue doing this. And with that kind of support, right, she's like an angel to me personally and I really love her to bits. And immediately we click. And since then, we move on. Well, both of us are yin and yang. <laughs> um, I think I'm kind of, Cheryl is more like the um, creative and he's very sensitive. Uh, I'm more like the rock that holds him down. <laughs> so as a result, both of us work very well together because you know uh, we balance out each other like in terms of personality. What was my first impression of Belinda? Uh, I think she's 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 a cat, I think she's a crazy cat baby. <laughs> and she's a bit more serious. Somehow, and I'm, I'm a bit more like the laughter, you know, I'm like, it's something crazy, yeah. She, she is like a sister to me, because I can be very emotional at times when people say bad things about us, you know, and I start to flare up. She will tend to tell me, she will calm me down, she will tell me it's okay, you know, you shouldn't think so much, you know, um, with God's help, we can do this together. After me and Belinda continue the cat therapy that we do, uh, we do get a lot of cats coming in, approaching us to start cat therapy and we also have support from the media and I was very delighted to know that we have the backing of Singaporeans in general and however, while we have so much support, we do have a lot of critics coming in. They even accuse me of chasing fame, um, they even told me that Sharia, why you, you already forgotten why you do this in the first place. And there are people who are telling me, why do you bring cats to the hospital? It's a dirty thing, you know? And the critics went on and on and on and on. So I started to like question myself, why am I doing this? You know, I have a full-time job, I'm very busy with it. And this is just an ad hoc thing that I'm doing for the society. And I wonder, Lanet, why, why Sharia, why are you still pushing it? Why are you believing so much in this? Linda helped me to overcome the criticism that I face by um, she's actually a very good mentor to me. I look up to her because she is more grounded. I am more the ambitious type. I love new ideas and all. So when all the criticism came in at that point of time where I was so happy that everything took place, right, she was telling me that you should ignore what people say. At the end of the day, 
when we do something good, there will be some people who have comments, negative comments about what we do. And she also informed me that, you know what, whenever people say something about me, do not comment back. Do not give them a chance to say more things to you. In the face of all this criticism, right, um, I drew strength from my patient. Um, there's this particular patient which really pushed me away from all this criticism. Um, she's actually about 40 years old and she has this condition that cannot be cured. So what happened was she was very you know, demoralized, she had low self-esteem and she couldn't move much. So what happened is that we thought of bringing her for the cat therapy session. Initially, she didn't like it. She was telling me that, oh, why, me? why am I here? You know, why are these cats here? And slowly after the first session, the second session, we still bring her out. By the third session, she asked before the third session, when are the cats coming? And to, to, to have such words coming from her, um, given that the problems that she's facing is a huge deal for me. We can see the whole spectrum from being very a very depressed woman. Her, she started to talk more to people. She started to go out for more programs, right? And during her last day, which is a very emotional day for me, uh, it was during one of the other programs, she actually took the mic and she said openly to everyone that she thanked me personally for being there for her, for bringing her to the cat therapy. And I tell myself, why should I care so much about all the criticism when I can see that I can change a life, you know, I can change someone who, who nearly gave up on their life, who is depressed, who is very sad, to someone that is very happy, you know, positive, even though she knows that her time is limited. These cats actually do something that even us humans can't. Right? To live up a spirit of someone who actually give up in her life. To see how successful cats now, I mean, you guys know now that I've been through so much. So much criticism and the support that I have from the people that really do believe in this cause. First thing for sure, I mean, I begin to have more confidence in myself. I told myself, look Shabby, you started something out of nowhere. You know, you usually have some, you usually start something and halfway you fail or you give up halfway. But for this, right, it actually pushed me, you know, because one of the main things, because I could see my beneficiaries actually um, getting so much good from it, right? So basically for me, it actually builds me to be a very um, more empathized, so I'm more empathized with people. And one more thing, of course, I don't care about what people talk about me anymore. Because as long as I know my conscience is very clear and I'm doing the right thing, so why should I care? Because I have a pillar of support that always behind me, inclusive of my family or friends, my own parents, my mom, my dad, my fur babies, all the therapy cats, inclusive my darling volunteers and of course, my co-founder Belinda.